need money. No, joking aside, I actually do. I've got to the stage in the business where to get to the next stage, I need to develop the prototype. But to do that, I need to invest some serious development time. But I also don't have development skills and I need to find the people that do. And to do that, I need some funding. Specifically, I need pre-seed funding. Where can you get this from? Well, unless you're sitting on a wad of cash or you've got some extremely rich relatives or you've got a Russian oligarch on the other end of the phone, then the likelihood is you're going to need to find an investor. And that's where I am now. What type of investment is out there and what's the best one? That's the subject of today's video. Let's go on a journey. Funding can come from four places. Firstly, your savings. Should you invest all of your savings in your business? Given that most small businesses will fail in their first five years, definitely not. But it's important you have some skin in the game. But if you think you can get away with starting your own business without investing any of your own money, think again. Secondly, angel investors. An angel investor is an individual who will take their own money and invest in your business. Thirdly, venture capitalist. A venture capitalist is slightly different than an angel investor. A venture capitalist will take money that is pulled from a number of other funds and invest in your business. And the fourth is an incubator. Incubators are companies that invest in you for a small return, like a small percentage of equity. And they tend to also run like accelerated programs. So you'll get access to maybe a workspace, some um, resources, uh, expertise, and generally some kind of network. What is, which one should you pick? For me, I'm at a stage where I need some pre-seed funding and the money alone isn't the only thing I need access to. I also need access to a bunch of resources, to a network, to technical expertise, to uh, other fintech startups, other fintech founders. So for this reason, I'm going to pursue an incubator over an angel investor or a VC at this stage. I'm really looking for breadth and for the value that you get from a program rather than just one specific individual's perspective. It's one place to start, but there's not just one incubator to choose from, there's loads. So I'm going to get out of the house, go to a coffee shop and do some research. So if you've learned anything from today, it's check what time the coffee shop closes before you get there. Half an hour before it closes is not conducive to productive work. But I still had a chance to look at four of the incubators I'm thinking of applying to, and three of them look like a good fit. But what am I actually researching? Because with an incubator, you tend to get access to a whole program of stuff. It's important you know what you get in return for the investment and roughly what percentage of equity they're looking for. Essentially, it boils down to what is it? What do you get? How long do you get it for? And what do you need to do to achieve it? What I'm realizing is that different incubators are targeting startups with different levels of maturity. Some are fine to accept people at the pre-seed funding, so that very early stage where you're still building your prototype and your MVP, that's where I am. But some are targeted at more growth stage startups. So somebody that's got an established, uh, maybe a small but established customer base, they've got a product, it, it works. And that's not quite where I am just yet. And some have different programs for different levels of maturity, but all still under the same company. Also, they will have slightly different application processes and application requirements. So what do you actually need for each one? It's really important that before you make your applications, you know exactly what it is you think you're signing up to. So, so far I've looked at four, there's several more to go.
Research done. There are hundreds of incubators out there, but I've whittled it down to six that I think are a good fit for where I am right now. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below, and also here are all their logos. Looking at incubators makes it all very real, and I'm incredibly excited. I look at these and I think, wow, there's so much opportunity out there. There's so many resources out there. And if we can do this, think what we can achieve, think where we can take this. And it's incredibly exciting and I feel really fired up and, and passionate about what, what I'm trying to do. The flip side of that is the imposter syndrome, the nagging self-doubt. Yeah, but you don't have an, a background in banking, you're probably not welcome in this space. Yeah, but your product is really complicated to build and it requires a lot of development investment, so they probably want something uh, easier, quicker, cheaper to build, something with better ROI. They won't invest in you. Yeah, but look how many startups there are out there. The probability of you getting any of these is very low. And you just have to, you really have to try and push these to one side, but it, it's, it's very hard to do that sometimes. You know, it's, it's a real, I don't always show you the other side. I show you, I make these videos, I show you how achievable everything is, because if I can do it, you can do it. But what I haven't always shown you is the, the self-doubt and the um, anxieties that sometimes come with this. The next video, I'll share what I've learned through doing these applications and give you some tips and tricks to help you with yours. I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please give it a like, comment with anything down below, and also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next one.